Hey, Nonprofit Visionaries, this is Shalita, the Nonprofit Easter O'Neill, and today I'm going to walk you through your Articles of Incorporation document. If you're just starting your nonprofit organization, then you need to take a look at this so that you don't get overwhelmed by the paperwork that's required and you can know what to expect. Now, later on down the line, if you're like, okay, I see what goes into it and I still want to hire somebody to do this for me, you can most definitely do that, but I'm here to show you how easy it can be and straightforward it could be if you decided to do it on your own. So depending on what state you're in, your articles of incorporation process may look a little bit different and there might be different requirements or there might be an online option where you can you can upload your articles of incorporation online or it might be they give you a template and then you have to fill it out and print it out and mail it in. Again, you won't know what that is until you Google, like I just did, Articles of Incorporation for Maryland. And this is where I am. Make sure you put your state in. And what came up for me, and I made sure, pay attention to the website that is for your state because I don't want you to get caught up in other websites that you might have to pay something for. If that is not your intention, go directly to the source. And the source here is maryland.gov. So I clicked on departmental forms and applications, which, um, or actually I, I clicked on the, yep, yeah, I did that. And then there was a link for me to be able to, that brought me here to the Maryland Business Express. And this is what Maryland calls it. And this is where you need to go nonprofit, for profit, whatever the situation may be to set up your corporation or your organization with the state. So you may need to, if your state allows you to upload your articles of incorporation online or do other types of things for your nonprofit or your business online, then you may need to set up or log in a login. You may need to create an account where all of your, your paperwork will be housed and also where you will be submitting your articles of incorporation. I'm not gonna go through that process, right? It's pretty self-explanatory, but whatever your state is asking you to do, make sure that you do that. Now, I wanted to also walk you through the articles of incorporation form. Now, like I said, this is for Maryland. This is what Maryland is, the template that Maryland is requiring people to use in. Also, it's not necessarily a requirement. You might want to take this template and add some things to it, but you know, I like to keep it simple. And as long as it includes everything that's required, I like to go with what the state is saying or the charitable, the Office of Charitable Organizations or, or solicitations whatever they call it in your state, what they're suggesting that we use. And as you'll see here, it's pretty straightforward. You know, the Articles of Incorporation for Tax Exempt Non-Stock Corporation. That's what I clicked to get here. And if you're starting a nonprofit organization, that's the in Maryland, then that is what it's called, non-stock. So first you just need to put your name, right? Your address personally, because it's connecting you to this entity. And then you want to give the name of your, your corporation or your nonprofit organization and make sure that this name is consistent with what's listed on your EIN number. And if you've watched that, that video, you'll know the process for that. You use that information. Then also you, for third, you, the purposes for which the corporation or the nonprofit is formed. So whether that's your mission statement, you know, you make sure you put that here so that they're clear on what your organization is going to be doing. Then you also want to put the street address of, of the principal office of the corporation. And so this is where you, you are going to be getting your mail and, per, and, and pertinent information and important information for your nonprofit organization. Fifth, the name of the resident agent of the corporation. So you as the founder of the nonprofit can be considered a resident agent if you live in the state in which you're applying. If you do not live, let's say you, you live in Chicago and you are trying to start an organization in Delaware, or, or that's not Delaware because they're special, in Maryland, <laughs> right? That's fine, but you're gonna need to have a resident agent or someone that is present that has a physical location in Maryland to send mail to. And so, you know, you need to make sure you identify who that is. But if that's you, it makes it all the more easier. Then you put your name and your address. Now, keep in mind, whatever address that you put here is public information. So if, you know, you don't want people to know where you live or or attach you to this organization, 
then you know you want to keep that information private then you can either have um a, a incubator so you know an office space where you can just have pay maybe a small fee every month in order to have your mail sent there you can do that i've i have done that or you know you, you might live in maryland but you also may want a resident agent you can have their information listed there too. There are plenty of companies that they, they are just resident agents. That's all they do. And they'll accept your mail. And another important note to make is that this information is, you need to be make sure that this isn't just a PO box where you can't accept deliveries because this is, if something, you know, if there was a court document that needs to be hand delivered to you, this needs to be an address that they can actually get a live person and that they, you know, they can actually do what it is, deliver what it is they need to deliver. So recap, make sure this information here, if you are the resident agent, the address that you put here is one that you're okay with the world knowing about. If not, there are options that you have. You can either hire a resident agent, pay a fee every month for, for your mail to go to them, or you can, if your, your, your office space, or if there's an incubator, um, you, can, you can also sign up and, and, and have it so that your mail goes there, right? So six, there's nothing you need to put here. This is clear, we said non-stock. So the corporation has no authority to, to issue capital stock. Now, the seventh is the number of directors of the corporation shall be. In most cases, it's the minimum is three and the maximum is however you, many that in your bylaws say that your organization can have. Now, I, <laughs> I suggest no more than seven because you know the larger your organization gets, the more uh, management, um, board development that is necessary. However, whatever your organization, whatever this is for your organization, make sure you put this number here. And as I just said, it can be increased or decreased pursuant to the bylaws of the organization. So down here, you wanna put the names of the directors who are gonna act until the first meeting or until their successors are duly chosen and qualified. So don't trip if you're like, okay, well, the only three people that I have are people, you know, people in my close circle. Y'all know how I feel about that. Best case scenario, it would be good to be intentional about the people that you, you connect with and invite to be your initial board members. But, you know, if if that's not the case and you have, you know, um, colleagues and people who know who you are, who want to support you, it's fine. You could put their names here. And on the first board meeting, if, if people want to transition off, or if you want to change them out, you can you can definitely do that. It's not set in stone. This is just to get you started. Right. So then the eighth is a clause here that has to be included. Now, this is language that the IRS requires you to have in your articles of incorporation in order for you to get your 501c3. And the wonderful part about it is in this document, these clauses are all ready here. So the dissolution clause, and then also the clause about your your charitable status and that all activities are for the purpose of cha or charitable purposes. So this is a boilerplate here. Now, if you're in a different state and this language is not in here, make sure you have your dissolution clause and the clause around your charitable purpose for the organization in here. You might have to manually put it in here, but those two things need to be in here so that you don't get your 501c3 application, which is the 1023 sent back to you or rejected right? And so then the last step is to sign it. So if it's just you as the incorporator, as the founder, that's fine too. If you have your, your board members lined up and you want them to sign, they can, they can sign here as well. And if you have a resident agent, you know, make sure that they, they're signing. And if you're the filing party, make sure you put your return address here. Again, the information that you would want to be publicly listed. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I'm a visual person. I need to be able to see what people are telling me to get an idea of you know, what I need to do. So there's also, they have their own their own instructions here on this on this page. So I encourage you to also read thoroughly through their instructions so that you don't make any mistakes and that you feel confident in what you are going to submit. All right, it's as simple as that. And then once you finish with this document, because in Maryland, everything is done online, you, you know, of course, save that document to your computer and then you can sign into your account and go to, um, you know, I, with, 
your articles of incorporation, upload your articles of incorporation, and then you'll be able to upload it there. All right. So don't be anxious. Don't be, you know, just just breathe. Don't be stressed out. That is a fairly simple process to file your articles of incorporation. Now, as far as um, how much it costs, it's going to vary from state to state. Um, in Maryland, I think I, I have did ne- have never paid more than two hundred dollars for the filing fee for this application. Your state might be different, but they will tell you what that is when you sign in or when you do your research on you know where you're supposed to submit your paperwork. And if you needed, you know, again, your templates. First and foremost, I would check to see if the state gives you a template that you can use. If not, you can always get my nonprofit template, Heaven, which is $37. And I have 60, over 60 templates. So not just the articles of incorporation template, but all kinds of your, your, your fundraising, budget, job descriptions, you name it. Again, only $37 and you can go on my website, shalitaoneal.com to get that information. So if you have any questions, of course, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Make sure you like, subscribe and share. All right. And go out here and, and, and file that paperwork, y'all, because we got work to do. Until next time, be blessed.